Hello and welcome to Switzer Investing TV. I'm Peter Switzer and as you can see we're giving Adelaide Convention Centre a bit of a plug today. But that's not really the story for the, tonight's program. It is all about lithium. Lithium stocks have been unbelievably shorted after being sensationally popular a year or so ago. And the question is, are the stocks like Pilbara Minerals and Mineral Resources and Lion Town and others in the buy zone. I want to talk to um, Jim Bailu of Tribeca Plus about her view on lithium, and then Paul Brickard and myself will chew the fat on what the shorters are saying, what the analysts are saying, and whether in actual fact lithium miners are really in the buy zone. So without any further ado, let's cross to Jim Bailu of Tribeca Alpha Plus. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining us, Jim Bailu. Thank you for having me, Peter. Okay, now I'm bringing you in. I, you don't, I don't usually pester you on the mining area, but <laughs> but you're a person. If you see companies that really look like good value, you, you don't ignore them. And lithium at the moment looks like it's good value, heavily shorted. Mm. Um, what's your general view on some of the lithium miners? Look, my general view is that I actually see significant amount of opportunity in this space. And um, when you actually think about it, 12 months ago, 18 months ago, this was the hot sector to be uh, invested in. Yep. Share price were multiple times uh, higher mm -hmm. and people or every single analyst was telling you why you should be buying them at the peak of the cycle, yep. right? So everything's great. Now, what's really changed from there? Only thing that's changed is China is starting a little bit slow. Mm -hmm. You know, the supply, we knew all the supply was coming online. It's, um, you know, there was actually bit of a supply, dis supply disruption, but nothing's really significantly changed. Right. What's really changed is China's a little bit slow, EV purchase a little bit slow, global demand for uh, electric vehicle is a little bit slow. That's because global growth is slowing down a yeah. little bit because we have to, you know, inflation was running at sky high, it has to slow down. So that was the main change. The demand environment is a little bit slower because everything is slowing down. And now suddenly there's, um, you know, this panic about, oh, whether do we really need electric electric vehicle, whether all of that. And I think that is unfounded. Mm. You know, demand is still there. Every country is moving to a huge percentage of electric vehicle. Mm. I was just looking at Australia. Governments put out all these incentives to drive the EV penetration. Yeah. Look at Europe. Everywhere is going to, in five years, is going to be much higher EV penetration than it is today. So mm. to me, it is something that you really should be taking advantage of and buying those companies. Yeah, and I must admit, my own view is I'm waiting tool, a EVs, well the infrastructure to charge a, a, a mm. EV mm. is much better. I don't want to be driving to Melbourne and have to right, queue up at Albury for, for an hour mm -hmm. to charge my car. That's so right. We, but I think in two years time, mm. the, the, the amount of miles they, or kilometres they can do before you need a charge will be greater, the number of charging machines will be greater, uh, and the public, the prices will even be lower. Absolutely. Mm. So I think, you know, everyone I talk to, um, and myself included, either next car or the car after is going to be EV. Yeah. There's no question about it. So yeah. we know demand is there. Yeah. And right now, is there any other alternative technology that can replace lithium to put into the battery? Mm. No, yeah. there is, yeah, there is salt water, there's saline, there's all these things, yeah. but they're just not powerful enough to replace lithium. So, you know, ultimately lithium is the product to go to. So, yeah. you know, at this point, um, you know, they're trading at very cheap prices. Yeah. Um, you know, it does signify there's um, there's a lot of opportunities. I, I'm also influenced by billionaires like <laughs> Gina Reinhart. Like <laughs> she yeah. buys. That's right. She thinks it's going to, and there's a very important billionaire called Elon Musk. Mm. He's not dropping lithium batteries at this point in time, Absolutely is he? not. Absolutely not. Just yeah. goes to show there's not enough alternative um, uh, technology out yeah. there. And the mergers acquisition activity is picking up in the lithium space. Yeah. Goes to show corporate buyers or whether it's mining companies or whether it's private um, you know billionaires yeah. they are seeing the opportunity in this critical mat uh, critical uh, mineral mm. now in fact uh, this morning government just released this huge report on critical mineral that they're focusing on they talk about something like 50 something odd projects um, across the lithium space so that they're looking to fund what well, they didn't say how much it'll be yeah. but you know but the thing is government even government is recognizing this critical mineral you look at Chile they're trying to stop foreigners buying their um, domestic, um, you know, sort of uh, lithium. Yeah. So it all goes to show there's a lot of value in those companies that's not recognised by the public market. Okay, so you're the sort of person that once you like a theme or you like
like an industry, you then go looking for what you think is the best value. That's right. So what miners in particular are you interested in or you've already purchased? Yeah, look, I, I've already purchased, I'm still buying the yeah. likes of Pilbara, uh, Pilbara Mineral. Yeah. Because the reason being that they just reported last week, right? You want to enjoy those critical points. You want to stick with the ones with strong balance sheets yeah. and has lower cost of production. So IGO has very cost of production, but you know they have that their own issues. They just mm. reported today, not so great. Um, but Pilbara has demonstrated in a tough environment, they're able to cut costs, hold back the capex mm. and still be profitable even at lower prices. And they've got a few billion dollars sitting on the balance sheet. So this is what you want to stick at rather than going for very high risk ones that's not really producing. Yep. Um, you know, so for us, it's really sitting in the, you know, Pilbara and waiting for the turning of the price point. Okay, is there a second best one behind Pilbara? Look, after that, I will go into the mineral resources. Mineral resources is a bit different. Mm. Part of the business is actually, um, you know, the, the iron ore. Iron ore. And that's doing really well, but yeah. that's not being recognized. A diversified company. That's right. Mm. So, and the share price is languishing because because of the lithium side. So we do think that, you know, it's making making the lithium side way too cheap or the iron ore side way too cheap. So that one is the probably more, little bit more defensive play of the lithium. Okay, you mentioned China. Mm. Uh, we saw they cut interest rates mm. um, last week. Is this going to be a, a help to the Chinese economy on, in 2024? Look, I think 2024 is going absolutely it's going to be a help. And I we've already seen the economy is turning, but very slowly. Mm. People are expecting the big bang and suddenly the economy is all gangbusters, yeah. but it's not. But it is turning very slowly. The consumer is not under as much pressure as some of the other consumers around the world. And their rates has been cutting for the consumer. So the, the living cost environment is actually pretty good for the consumer and the economy is on the way back up. We just saw the recent data. It's tra it's growing now above 5%. That's better than a lot of other economies. Yeah. And, and it still is a more it. mature economy. We That's have right. time. They got 10 or 11% when they're less well, developed. That's but, right. Yeah. Now they're the second largest economy mm, yeah. and they're growing at 5%. That's not too bad. They potentially do a little bit better this year. So okay. it is picking up. We'll trust you on China, <laughs> uh, Jim Lu. And one last one. A lot, a lot of the... Uh, People in our Boom Doom Zoom webinar on Thursdays from the Switzer Report often ask us about Telex, mm. TLX. Well, what do you think of this company? Look, I do like Telex a lot um, because I know Chris, who's created this company, um, wanted to run a biotech company like a funds management business, mm. right? So he wanted to have lots of different molecules. So mm. they mature at different stage yeah. and then they will be, and he'll be pragmatic, he'll commercialize with different partnerships. So By molecule, you mean different biotech uh, businesses? Different businesses, yeah, yeah. it's an individual businesses. It's a bit so like what Bailador did with a whole lot of tech that's, companies. That's right, that's yeah. what they do. They want to be like a fund managers for biotech companies yeah, so right. that's what it, but that was his background he used to run those uh, much um, sort of investment arm for a lot of those by big farmers yeah. um, in Europe for many mm. years ago yeah. so that's he wanted to do and he's done a great job with mm. that now the the but I guess the pushback with that is that now there are so many different molecules or different businesses, which one is driving it. So you yeah. buy Telex because you buy uh, Chris, yeah. rather than you buy it because this particular thing's going to work or that's yeah. going to work. It's very different. And I know function. when you get to those sort of um, funds like a, a robot um, tech type fund, mm -hmm. Often the, the people who select might go for 30 or 40 companies knowing that maybe 20 of them will never do well, mm. but the five or 10 that really do mm. will carry the day. Mm. Is Telex a bit like that as well, that some of those biotechs will never make it, but one could be a fantastic performer down the track? Yeah, so I think he's, that, that, that it's a bit like that, but yeah. I think his uh, hit rate actually been pretty high. So right. Chris actually knows his stuff. So yeah. actually been doing really well. Yeah. And he's pragmatic. He doesn't want to put in a whole lot of cost to commercialize yeah. them. So he'll partner with a third party partner and generate cash flow. So it's been doing really well, but it really comes down to you invest in this because you invest in the biotech fund. It's almost yeah. that kind of- We know position. tech companies are going to benefit from lower interest rates. Mm. Will biotech- It's the same. same it's exactly the same. So there um, could be a bit of a, a, a natural uplift when interest rates fall. That's right. And then I tell you what's also interesting because biotech didn't do so well last year because mm. the entire healthcare businesses, healthcare sector were the worst performing sector because of GLP-1 drugs and yep. things. So now that with the healthcare sector turning somewhat, biotech may well do better than other tech businesses. All right, one last one because you made me think about this. Uh, when you look at a company like Mesoblast, mm. 
continually disappointing the, the market. There was a time where it was the darling of the market. Mm. Had some good news last week um, from the, uh, the, the um, was it the, the, the American Drug Administration? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what do you reckon about Mesoblast? Look, Mesoblast, it's, um, it's almost the opposite of Tilix. So they've been very focusing on what they want to achieve, which yep. is using stem cell to generate a lot of therapy. Yep. And that's breakthrough, you know, it's a really technological uh, advancement uh, mm. in what they can achieve. Um, you know, I just think it's it's a little bit harder for general investors right. because we don't, you know, we, we're just not on top of a lot of those tech. And we don't know, do we? It's, it's hit and miss, yeah. right? So, yeah. and it's very specialized. So, mm. you know, for the believers, Mesoblast is the one that you follow your money forever for. Mm. Um, but for generalists, it's just very harder to understand yeah. what is the probability of getting a return for the next 12 months. It's yeah. very hard. Okay. So, for those people who've gone into Mesoblast, if they haven't lost too much, do you think it's worth just hanging in there just in case they do get a, a big tick from the, the Drug Administration in the US? Look, um, uh, no so advice, yeah, by the yeah, way. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so for me, it's I almost feel, um, you know, for me, uh, with Mesoblast, I've seen it, um, I've I've looked at it, followed <laughs> loosely for yeah. 10, 15 years. Yeah. I do feel... Too you know, risky. Yeah, unless you're a strong believer. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, it's like I take any win and yeah. I put into other biotech, you know, whether it's Telex and others. Um, yeah. Just that it's more defensive, okay. it's stable. Somebody uh, else is managing Absolutely it. for the thrill seeker <laughs> who's prepared to cross his fingers and maybe his toes. That's right. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. that's Jumbo Luke, Tribeca Alpha Plus. <laughs> That's the show for tonight. Thanks for joining us. Remember, if you want to see all of the uh, program, you're going to have to be a Switzer Report um, subscriber. So go to switzerreport.com.au.